Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of Mount and Blade 2. Bannerlord. It is by Tail Worlds Entertainment and released into Steam Early Access on March 30th, 2020. This will be my Early Access coverage of said game. If you haven't played the Mount and Blade series of games in any capacity, you are missing out. Tremendous top 20 game of all time. Possibly top 15. I played quite a bit of Warband. Really, really enjoyed it. It doesn't quite crack the top 10 for me, but it's real close. It's on the cusp. It's fantastic considering I've played literally thousands upon thousands of games. Anything in the top 100 is impressive. So being up there, this is definitely one of the best games ever made in the history of the world. That's, again, referring more to Warband than to this game, which I haven't played yet. So I have to reserve judgment until we actually play it. That being said, let's hop in and begin. You don't need me a babbling and rambling about stuff that we haven't done yet. Let's go see what's up. Seriously, if you guys haven't played Mount and Blade Warband, go and do so. Fantastic game. Really, really highly recommend it. If you guys are fans of my Battle Brothers series, this is basically how I would always explain Battle Brothers to people who have not played it. It would have been more of a tactical turn-based strategy version of Mount and Blade. Granted, again, Battle Brothers a little bit watered down as you're basically just a group of mercenaries and you don't really get out of that realm of things. This, you start as a single person, you get a group of mercenaries, you serve a king, you do all sorts of crazy stuff. It's great. Go check it out, guys. Seriously. Like, go. Do it. Make it a thing. And then, of course, support this one in early access. It's fine. Anyway, let's go see what we have available to us. I'm going to butcher names and things and it's going to be terrible. But you guys should still be able to enjoy it. So, we have the Vlandians. They are descendants of adventurers from the West who lived under the Empire for centuries before forming an independent kingdom. With the decline of imperial authority, they have evolved into a well-organized feudal society led by a cast of warlike nobles who prefer to fight with spears and lances on horseback. And we get 20% more upgrade XP for troops from Battels. We have the Stagians. The Sturgeons are descendants of the foreign tribes of northern Calradia, or Calradia. Calradia? We'll go with Calradia. That's like the area that you did in Warband, by the way. Now, as the Empire expanded into the cold forests, they found that a ready market for the luxurious furs of woodland animals whom they traditionally hunted and trapped. Okay, Sturgeon chieftains became princes, vying for preeminence with the help of Nord mercenaries, who migrated into their realm. They are good hunters and wanderers traveling far in search for opportunities both for trade and for plunder. 20% less speed penalty from snow. And of the Empire, the Calradian Empire, is in decline. Even before the murder of the Emperor Arenikos, the once united realm was torn by political rivalries. Today, those factions are in open war. Yet Calradians endure. They are technologically more advanced than their neighbors, and their mastery of engineering is not just evident in their aqueducts, beautiful architecture, and massive city walls. It also makes them experts in siege warfare. 20% construction speed on town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines. Interesting. Azurai are the inhabitants of the Nahasa Desert. A mixture of nomadic Bedouin and settled oasis farmers. They are famous for their horsemanship and their knowledge of the learning of many lands, especially medicine, gained from lying on some of the continent's most lucrative trade routes. Each clan is fiercely proud of its lineage and often jealous of others. But when united by a charismatic leader, they become a major force in the south. Caravans are 30% cheaper to build and 10% uh, less trade penalty. Not too bad. Hmm. The Kuzade Confederation of Steppe Tribes used to live a nomadic life, but have recently settled in the eastern frontier of the Empire and are slowly transitioning into an agrarian society with permanent town centers. Despite this, they still retain many aspects of their nomadic life, including their affinity with horses. They are masters of mounted archery, shooting and then galloping out of reach. 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on campaign map. Cool. And the Batanians still remember the olden days when the woods stretched across northern Calradia, and the Empire and its cities had yet to violate their sanctity. The fierce warriors remain loyal to their traditional ways, they paint their faces when going to battle, and even their noblemen prefer to fight on foot while using great axes and two-handed swords with deadly efficiency. 
Or just give them 10% less speed penalty to their parties. All right, cool. Next. Character creation. We get to, to change what we look like. All right. We look I like we can maybe fix up a little something. All right. Oh, we got voices. Hello. Form a line! That's terrifying. Line up! Put men! Boot forth! Get them! I like it. All right. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, we can randomize all. We'll just let's throw some randomization in there. Let's just kind of see what's, what's scrolling through here. That's weird. I think we changed the hair color a little bit, and I think we're set. Let's just make it a little bit darker. There we go. I guess that's us. Voice pitch? Oh. Leave no one breathing! Please shout him! Attack! Place up! Put men! Yeah! <laughs> I like it. All right, that's cool. All right, and we could be like really short, or we'd be super tall. We're we're a little bit above average, not by much. So yeah, that seems about right. Okay, we're gonna roll with that. It's gonna be fine. Do we name our character? Eventually, I'm imagining. Oh, oh, we have family members. Ooh, this is cool. You were born. Oh, uh, this is the how the the start. Okay, okay, okay. This is this is how they always build it. Like not a tremendous amount of games do this anymore. So it's it's really cool to see that they kept this in. So. You were born into a family of members of the Chieftain's Hearthguard, or Hearthguard, or, or Hearthguard, or however you want to say it. It's Hearth, in my opinion. Everybody else calls it Hearth. It's fine. Healers, tribesmen, smith, foresters, or bards. Um, I'm going to go with smiths. Smiths. We get ourselves a little bit too two-handed. It's not really what I want. I want polearm mastery. All right. Well, it's cool that we get to see what it does for us, though. I'm just curious as to what it... Does anything give us polearm mastery? I don't think so. All right, we'll just go with smiths. That's fine. Next, as a child, you were noted for your leadership skills, your brawn, your attention to detail, your aptitude for numbers, your way with people, your skill with horses. My brawn! My brawn was so good! Uh, leadership skills, attention to detail, aptitude for numbers, way with people. Um... Honestly, I think I'll go with way, way with people. That's going to give us a little bit of leadership and a little bit of charm. So, it's not bad. Growing up... I'm, I'm, is this is this me? I'm, I'm now a, a girl? I don't know. Grow up, you spent most of your time at the Town's Watch training ground with the alley gangs, uh, at the docks and building sites, in the markets and caravanserais, reading and studying and working at the stables. Uh, with the alley gangs... The town's watch, training grounds, at the docks and building sites. I, I might do that one, actually. In the markets, that's not bad either. Uh, we're going to go with the docks. Next up. As a youngster, growing up in Karadia, war was never too far away. I stood guard uh, I stood guard with the garrisons, rode with the scouts, trained with the infantry, joined the skirmishers, Joined the Kern, or marched with camp followers. Joined with the Kern, skirmishers, infantry, probably that one, scouts, garrison. We're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go with the uh, join the infantry. I like it. Before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was that you defeated an enemy in battle. You saved your city quarter from a fire. You invested some money in a workshop. You survived a siege. You had a famous escapade where you treated people well. I kind of want to go with... I kind of want to go with the, you had a famous escapade. Because, again, that's going to give us a little bit of a roguery. Um, actually, that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting it to do something along the social lines there. You treated people well. That's a social charm. Um, I'm probably going to go with I defeated an enemy in battle because it just sounds cool. But, eh, it's fine. Um... Just like to see what stats come flying our way if we, yeah. All right, we're gonna defeat an enemy in battle. I'm cool with that. That tells us down here to the breakdown a little bit more if you want it. Ten skill level, and one focus point to one-handed and two-handed combat, one attribute to vigor, plus one to valor, and twenty to renown. Next, 
Choose your story background. Like many families in Calradia, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain and your two youngest siblings seized. But you and your brothers survived because... You subdued a raider. You drove them off with arrows. You rode off on a fast horse. You tricked the raiders. Or you organized the travelers to break out. Um, I, I like the idea of subduing the raider. But what about driving off with arrows? Not really my thing. You rode off on a fast horse. Eh? Eh? I have no horse skills. I need that, I think. You tricked the raiders, you organized the breakout. I, I'm going to go with I rode off on a fast horse. Yeah, yeah we're going to go with that. You prepare to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue. Here is your character. Click finish if you are ready or go back to make changes. Enter your name. My name is Griff. My name is Kadugan. Kadugan. I kind of wish I kept Kadugan. It's fine. Egan. No, we're gonna we're gonna make our name. We're gonna make our name. We are going to be. I, I kind of want to revitalize a player named Gus. You know what? I will. A player named Gus. A player. Oops. I can spell sometimes. Named Gus. That's who we are. We are a player named Gus. Ah uh, yeah. All right. So sweet, sweet, nice styles with a Z. Here are our starting stats. Eh, maybe not the greatest thing. I like the fact that you can see it. But at the same time, I also kind of appreciated the mystery from the earlier games. Not knowing exactly what you were getting. I mean, you could kind of figure it out a little bit, but not knowing exactly what stats you were going to get. This is nice, and the mystery was nice, so yeah, it's good. I, I like them both. Uh, what, 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 what's wrong? I want to say next. I might... Do, um, something not ready to g go? Click finish if you're ready, or back if you're... Oh, no! Oh, no! It kept all the choices, at least, but... Oh, I can click next, but if I if I change the name... Oh, I can't have spaces. Player name Gus, all one word. Okay, okay. It's cool. It's cool. Figured it out. Determine the game's difficulty. I have had so oh realist, that's not a good idea. Um, I found that when I played this originally, when I played Warband, for instance, uh it starts you off with like super easy, like even easier than this. You start with like one quarter damage and all this stuff. And I had gotten used to that. I didn't know that was like the default setting. So it starts you off a very easy. The game is still a pretty difficult game. So I think I'm gonna go with with reduced to two thirds. Uh, friendly troops received damage. Friendly parties received damage. Two thirds. Player received damage. I guess we're just gonna do that. Recruitment difficulty two extra, one extra. Map movement speed very easy. I'm gonna keep the map movement speed up. Eh. Enable death. Let's see here. Choose if the heroes are able to die on the battlefield. Um, I'm gonna say no. And auto allocation of perks for members in your clan. No, we're not going to do that. All right, so this might not be the greatest start. I know a lot of people will probably go like super hardcore mode. They're like amazing at the game. I'm okay at the game, but I definitely struggle early on. And I, I like to fight a lot of the battles myself. Not totally alone, but I do a lot of like disrupting of formations and charging in. And I'll eat an arrow or a, a javelin or two, so... For me, I like to be able to take a little bit of extra hits. So this is going to be, this is still going to be pretty bad for me. I'm probably going to die. This might even be a mistake. I probably should have just left it on the defaulted start, but we're not going to do that. It has been not too long, maybe a month since I last played Mount and Blade Warband. Fantastic game. Again, I highly recommend you go out, go back and check out all of the Mountain Blades. There's like a whole bunch. And I know when I say Mount and Blade quickly, it sounds like I'm saying Mountain Blade. But, uh, the original game, oh, interesting, the original game, basically Warband was the exact same thing as the original game, only 
like better graphics. It was just it was an upgraded version of the original game. So if you have the original game, play that. It's really really fun. If you have Warband and the original game, probably just play Warband because, like I said, it's to my knowledge better in every way. If you have uh, Fire and Sword or any of the other mods or DLC or what have you for Warband, go play those. They're all a lot of fun. Anyway, it is Niacin. Brother, it has been three days now and we've been tracking those bastages. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Farak and Athene? Are we up for a fight? This... This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush off our skills. The practice could come up useful when we catch up with the raiders. Uh, you know what? I'm going to run the course. I need to know if I can... Know that I can fight if I have to. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go then. Alright, let's go. Advanced melee training with sword, spear, and shield. With sword and shield. Range training with javelin, bow, cr uh, crossbow. Sword, shield, mounted spear, sword, and ranged. You can lead the training by holding tab. Okay. Alright, wazzed to move around. As you would expect. Okay, uh, you can... Alright, well, I guess we're entering the training area now. Kind of neat. Sword training. So I guess we have to pick this up. Uh, how do we... Uh, oh, 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 wait, wait, there we go, there we go, selected, that's what I thought, okay. Go to the trainer, defend from left. Defend from right. Okay, defend from up. Defend from down. Oh, that's cool, I didn't know you could do that with, oh, I didn't know you could do that with your, uh, with your shield as well. That's pretty neat. Alright, so if you guys are wondering what's happening there, just so you know, it's uh, basically as you click and you move your weapon, you like as you're clicking and moving your weapon, you will attack in a specific way. Usually you're able to change it on the fly. It doesn't look like it. It looks like once you commit, you're committed. Uh, usually you're able to switch after you have it. That's It's interesting. Um, then you have the down attack, which is a stab, the up, which is the up, which is overhead. And it looks like whatever your last attack was is your current attack again. It's very interesting, and I didn't realize you could block different directions with your shield. Your shield just used to be, if I recall correctly, you would just block whatever was right in front of you. Like, you just held it there. That's, that's cool, I like it. Alright, we're going to go to another uh, training. Uh, what is this one? It looks like it's the same thing that we had before. Let's go here, go to the trainer. This guy, huh? Fight will start within one second. Oh, hey, 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 calm down. Hey, easy, ninja. Oh, you can, as you can see, this is not going well. I'm kind of getting murdered here. Yeah, that wasn't good at all. So, as you can imagine, I didn't do super well with, uh, I've lost. I, I think it's because I was supposed to have a different guy. Like, that dude's just designed to, like, whoop my booty. You lost. Uh, oh, interacting with the weapon rack. Yeah, I think the fact that I, I, I chose one weapon and then switched it. I think cut no, he ran away, dude. I want I want you. No, it just wants me to go over here and talk to this guy. This guy's gonna beat me senseless again. Trying to keep, I'm trying to keep distance from him. Also, oh, 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 God, oh, okay, 
Okay, go to the veteran trainer. Are you kidding me? You know how hard that was? Oh, oh god. Oh god, he's starting immediately. Salt mist. You successfully finished training? Okay. Okay, well that was terrible. I didn't enjoy that at all. So now we have a lance? I can't... How do you... Hmm. How do you beat the guy with this? I'm very curious. Oh, well, we'll give it a shot. I, I don't think I can beat this guy. I just don't attack quick enough. If I don't get distance, I'm never going to hit him. Yeah. See? He just can attack non-stop and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, I hit him. I thought I hit him in the head there. Right in the shin. And he beat me. Wow, it's it's rough. Okay, well, I think I'm done with, with that. I mean, you don't really want a lance fight. Is there a way to get through to the next training area? You don't really want a lance fight with um with a lance any or like uh, on foot. You want to be on horseback. Like that's that's the dream, right? You don't want to be on foot. Like I said, I'm not super fantastic with this stuff. If I'm being 100% honest, I'm I'm kind of meh. But we're gonna continue to play around. We're gonna try. We're gonna get a little bit better. Um, with the spear and the shield, I didn't have a spear. I just had like. That that wasn't a spear. That was a that was definitely a lance. This is a spear right here. Now this this I'm all about. The old workhorse, huh? Do I go this way with it? I don't go this way with it. Finish the track and hit as many targets as you can. Oh, okay. Now this is definitely more my style. I do enjoy the mounted combat in this game, hence mount and blade. Oh, I missed. Boo. Alright, we're just gonna keep going. Bad Bumpy is bad. Oh, I missed again. Boo. Yeah, so my aim's a little bit off. I'm a little out of practice. I missed again. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Man, I, wow, what is going on? Not usually that bad. It's all right. It's all right. You know, you gotta you gotta get your uh, yourselves uh, situated. Your little, little jump and leap there. You know. There we go. It's like the perfect extension on that one. I, wait, how did I miss that one? Hmm. That seemed a little questionable. And bam. Super easy. And right through the gate. And there we go. Uh, you know, that's, that's okay. Alright, so what we're going to do is... We're going to try the same thing with uh, this. Oh, there's actually a bow. Wow, that's going to be interesting. Alright, mount up on the horse again. It is a little bit different with... Can, you, can we turn, little guy? There we go. It's a little bit different with the uh, the sword. Gotta get a lot closer. I don't know how that missed. That went right through the item. There we go. Yeah, I'm not real sure about that other one. That was really strange. I don't really know how I missed that one. Okay, I saw how I missed that one. Alright, so I gotta get used to the new hit markers. Because again, this is... This is a little bit different than before. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of the same basics, but it just has a little bit of a different feel. It's 
So, first episode, we're just gonna ride through. We're gonna do some of the training. We're gonna you know, kind of get the story started. Uh, I am gonna post another video probably same day, or like right after. Uh, that way we get into the actual gameplay and, and have some fun other than just the training. Aw. It's too far away. Oh, I ran into a, a, a tree that I couldn't get past. That's interesting. That's, that's unfortunate. There we are. Nailed it. Almost nailed it. Definitely didn't nail it. Man. I can't hit those ones on the left to save my life. This is not happening. I don't think I hit a single one on the left. Okay, cool. Yeah, it wasn't great. We did it. We'll try it. We'll try the ranged. It's F then Z to dismount. That's an interesting change. I don't despise it. I don't dislike it. All right, let's go again. There's no way this ends well. well maybe it does. Well, we could try hitting from further back, but you see the spread. You know. You know how hard it is to hit a ranged target. A ranged combat on horseback. I mean, we keep lobbing them. I mean, it's possible. It's highly unlikely, though. There we go. Oh, look at that! From downtown. From uptown. From around town. We have ten shots left. Whoa, whoa, how do we miss that? I'm embarrassed for me and everyone else. Like that was that was dead center. Like how do how could we have conceivably missed that? Oh my goodness, we hit that one. That was crazy. And we got four shots left, so we gotta make sure these count. And that one did not count. Very unlucky. I only missed two. No, couldn't do that one. Oh, we have more. We have more arrows. I, oh, I didn't know that. All right. Well, we missed like all the last ones there. For I'm okay with that. All right. What else we got? Um, range training. I'm okay with going through the whole thing. I still don't think we're ever going to be able to get through the uh, sword and... Oh, got to pick up a weapon. You know, we'll start with the bow. We just did the bow. We'll, we'll, we'll finish up with the bow. All right. Hit all 12 of the targets. Do, am I able to move a little? There we go. Wow, you were way more precise. I'm assuming you have archery skills with this character, because normally it's not this good. And if you hold it too long, you start to lose your uh, your your good aim. There it is. 30.2 seconds. That's not too bad. I, it'd be nice to actually see me play this, or it, it would feel nice to be able to play this all the way through as a ranged character, but... I just don't see that happening. All right, we gotta account for the drop. Oh, more drop than I thought. There we are. Uh, I dropped a little lower than I wanted. There we are. And right there. Right there. Is it just because it's at a weird angle? I'm a little confused. Simple and easy enough. All day sure. I kind of wish it shows us the misses too. It's a little bit longer to get through all that. Oh, there's two more targets. Oh, geez. Got one, got two. Got one, got two. Got two. There it is. Not the greatest. Definitely not the greatest. I'm sure the people with the mad skills would definitely be doing a little bit better than me, but you know what? I'll take it. Ah. Now this one's a bit more straightforward, a lot less drop off. Still have to actually aim the right spot. 
Apparently I'm just slightly off. What is wrong with me? Oh, the reload speed is brutal. Did I over? Did I shoot that above it? Wow. See, this this is the stuff that makes me really bad in, uh, I guess, PvP combat. Other than everything else, but... Apparently I just don't know the weapons as well as I think. Like, I knew the javelins had drop-off, but not as much as I thought they did. I know the art, the uh, bow and arrow has a little bit of drop off, and I know there's some drop with the crossbow, but a lot less, but it seems like it's almost dead dead on. You just have to go for it. Alright, so we're going to go back, we're going to do the sword training. I don't think I'll ever be able to get through the spear and shield, but eh, we'll see. We'll see. It'll be a good episode either way. Get through all the training, you guys can mock me, I'm totally okay with that. Alright, big old two-handed sword. Defend from the left, defend from the right, defend from up, defend from Die, down. Attack from the left, attack from the right, attack from the up, attack from the down. And I have successfully finished my training. Alright, now this should be relatively simplistic for me. Alright, big guy, what do you got for me? Let's do this thing. Just beat you to death. Still coming, huh? Yeah. Got him. Is that all you got? Bring it on. See, it's cool when you have a weapon that you can actually fight back with. It's not so cool when you don't have those weapons that you can fight back with. Oh. Easy. Easy. Now, again, they're calling this a spear. I mean, maybe it is. It feels like a lance. Look how long this thing is. Ah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but we're going to give it a shot. Maybe it's literally just counter. Just counter play. Maybe that's the only way to do it. Keep walloping me. See, he just. It's. You can't ever land an attack. It's basically impossible. Unless he does stuff like that. Come on. I'll, I'll just walk into you. I mean, if, if that's what you're after. See, if you get that distance, you can you can do some damage, but if you don't get the distance, you're never going to do anything. Oh, there we go. All right. I did it. I survived it. I don't think it's going to go well, but I'll take it. Oh, oh God. He's angry. Ow. Calm, calm, calm your beard. Calm your beard. Dude, calm down. Ow! Stop it! Stay back! Oh my goodness. Oh, that was the worst. Okay, well, we did the training, guys and gals. Oh, I got molly whops. Oh, oh god, they're super angry again. Get me away from these guys. Alright, well there you go, guys and gals. That's gonna be our training, our character creation, or basically our, our prelude to the story. If you will, I'm going to do an immediate episode right after this. Going to post it right away so we get into the campaign, see some of the actual gameplay and everything else. So hopefully you guys were cool with that. You got a, a pretty good laugh at me doing pretty terrible at many things. But you know what? It's all in fun. It's good. It's enjoyable. Great game, like I said. I've said it many times. I can't wait to see what all is going on in this one. And see how it plays, how it feels when you get actually into the battle and everything else. The game, once again, is called Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. It is by Tail Worlds Entertainment, and it released today, March 30th, 2020, into Steam Early Access. You guys can grab it for yourselves, play it, enjoy it, love it. It's been a long time coming. Literally years people have been waiting for this game to come out, and it's finally here, and I'm excited. You should be excited. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links and things of that nature. 
I want to give a shout out and a thank you to the folks over at Tail Worlds Entertainment for sending this my way and allowing me to provide coverage of this for all of you. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, first off, what's wrong with you? It was terrible, but it was probably funny. And anyway, if you did enjoy what you saw, go ahead and leave a like if you feel like it. If you don't, at least subscribe to the channel, check out the next video, see if this is your cup of tea. If it isn't, what's wrong with you? If it is, grab the game, play it. That's that's the goal, right? All right, folks, wishlist the game if you're not going to grab it right away. It always helps with uh, searches, relevancy, and all that stuff on Steam, and it lets the developer know there's interest in the game. Till the next episode, I'm Bumpy McSquiggums. Thanks so much for stopping by the Freak Show, and I'll see you next time.